So recently, as most of you know, I came under fire for someone who questioned why do I do what I do? Why do I make videos that cater to a certain furry crowd? We all know the ones I'm talking about. The Why series for one. The Why Vore video. The Why Pause video. Why Mask and Why Diapers. Well folks, here we go. You read the title right. Yes indeed, Blazy Fox is back and he's reacted to my video. But not only that, Homie also decided to spurg out on his Twitter page. He started going off, you know, editing Team YouTube, trying to get their attention, telling them that my video had all his videos in it and I was doing some kind of copyright manipulation. Like I was like f***ing with the system and you know, YouTube's conspiring against him. It goes deep y'all today. We're gonna be checking all that out and we're gonna be talking about Blazy Fox once again. But I know a lot of y'all who's watching this video right now might not know who Blazy Fox is. So let me give you a quick synopsis. Blazy Fox is a furry that I made a video on earlier this month. He had a video where he was talking about suing this 14 year old for calling him a degenerate and using his picture in their video. He started going off on this 14 year old and basically saying that what he did is super illegal and like it's bad. He ended up deleting the video eventually because it made him look weird. So I was made aware of this video with this thumbnail in it. Uh, middle age furry practice degeneracy. Oh my. <laughs> this, uh, so yes, I am being attacked. I am being attacked. Oh no. How, how, how scary. But uh, I'm more or less, I'm making this video because it's hilarious the points he makes are just hilarious and yes this is a 14 year old child so he's barely allowed on youtube i'm pretty sure you have to be 13 to sign up for youtube and the fact he is talking about like the stuff he does talk about and like like in other videos it talks about degeneracy and all this kind of stuff it's like a minor should not be talking about this. So, yeah, YouTube should really be doing something about this. I have reported it. If you do go watch this video yourself, do report it. Because, yeah, it's a minor talking about things that he shouldn't be talking about. Yeah, anyway, this is this is a really funny video. It's a really funny video. The points he makes are funny. So let's just get into it right now, okay? Oh, I, I do want to point out his, his little icon is... Like, a, a dude holding a gun, which is always, like, it comes off as a threat in these kind of videos. So that's something I could put to YouTube. Like, uh, yeah, his character's holding a gun. That's a little bit of a threat. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> but the, 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 the main point is, is he used to have a shark character in his videos. That's, but yeah, his whole, his whole thing is attacking furries and calling them degenerates and all this kind of stuff. But yeah, his icon was a shark was was a shark yeah he sounded like a hypocrite kid <laughs> let's let's jump into this video hello everybody it is shark hunter here and today i'm going to be reacting to a video shark called hunter. replying to furry hate comments yeah. now if you don't know this person is a grown ass 31 year old man that all right well all right <laughs> again i'm not bullying this person i'm like a teacher uh, looking at his report and giving him an f <laughs> Because, for one, I'm 30 years old. I don't know where you got 31 years old from, but I'm 30 years old, for one. And I have to say, the image you used, the photo of me that you used, I think it's a good photo. I don't look 30 there. I think I look pretty good. I really like that photo. And also, you can't use my photo without my permission. I can do legal stuff now because you can't use my photo. Just so you know. So I decided to make this documentary. I looked into him and I started seeing this weird pattern where he'd post these videos that were geared towards kids, sometimes, you know, kind of discreetly geared towards kids and other times very blatantly geared towards kids. And then mixed throughout there, he would have videos of him doing these weird kink things like NSFW videos. That's the best way to describe them where he would be shaking his ass or doing these videos where he has really big paws. And I know it might sound weird to y'all. You're probably thinking like, Lemur, what do you mean he had really big paws? How is that kink content? 
And one thing you gotta know about Blazy is that things that might not seem sexual to you seem sexual to him. Things like body odor, for some reason, large features such as hands and feet. He's into this stuff. He's into like Vor. He's into the idea of a big character consuming a small character. It's very weird the things this guy is into, but that's not really what this video is about. This video is about Blazy's blatant misuse of the copyright system. And it's also about his response to my video. But first, let's look at these tweets where he tries to get Team YouTube to look at my video. He also tried to file it himself. So not only did he try to use their manual system, but he also tried to reach out to their support system to try to get my video taken down. So obviously it's really bothering him. So this dude starts off by straight up sending my whole ass video to Team YouTube, like snitch status and shit. And he writes, at Team YouTube, this video spends over half of the runtime using my content to call me a There's clips lasting over two minutes and 30 seconds completely unedited from my video with a minute of commentary between. But that's not grounds for copyright? Of course YouTube doesn't respond to this shit because on their end it probably looks like spam. I don't think that they respond to a lot of the tweets where there's like a direct video linked, but I may be wrong. They might just be really ignoring Blazy because his account's weird, maybe like it's because it's NSFW. I have no idea, but they ignored his ass for quite a bit. And I've reached out to the team YouTube Twitter and it doesn't really take that long. So I don't know why he had such trouble, but he kept going and he said at team YouTube and then also at YouTube. I timestamped all the footage that was used from separate videos he used of mine all over 30 seconds of unedited footage. Unedited, no commentary, no nothing, besides the little he does in between videos, which again, are unedited. No filters. The f does that mean? Do you think that just adding a filter over somebody's video therefore makes it transformative? I did indeed edit down your videos, Blazy. I didn't use any of your full content, and I also commentated after every video played. And beforehand, actually. I commentated before and after, Every single clip I played, it's completely fair use and I criticized every single video that I watched. That's why when you tried to make your copyright claim, it didn't go through. But let's continue to see Blazy try to talk to Team YouTube or YouTube and basically snitch on me. But not really because what he's trying to snitch on me for, I didn't even do. So he's just like falsely claiming that I stole his videos when he knows damn well that's not what I did. Nobody went to my Blazy video in replacement for his. They went to my Blazy video so they can see what I have to say about Blazy. And then this is when shit starts to get wild, y'all. Then Blazy makes the claim that YouTube is somehow conspiring against him because he's a furry. A lot of people doubted me. Yeah, he might be weird, but I don't think he's a lol cow. Come on, y'all. He's out here trying to say that Team YouTube is conspiring against him. He's crazy. He's crazy as fuck. Like, I didn't even think this guy had any mental illnesses. He goes on to say that I claim that he had mental illnesses or made fun of him for the fact. I don't think one time in my video I claimed he had any sort of mental illness. And now I do. Now I do think he has a mental illness because what the fuck is this? He says, I feel like I'm being singled out by someone on your team because I'm a furry. This video is nothing but hateful lies and his audience is now sending nasty comments to me. What's the point of the copyright system if he can use so much unedited footage from my videos? It's called fair use, motherfucker. I don't know, maybe that shit's just like not widely known in Australia or wherever the fuck you're from. But here in America, it's a pretty big deal. I mean, everywhere, fair use is a pretty big deal, right? I mean, take the media, for example. The media is constantly looking at other people's stuff. I mean, you have news in Australia, right, Blazy? You watch the news. You're like a 30-year-old man. I'm sure you watch Fox News all the time or whatever the equivalent to that is in Australia, right? So you're sitting down, you're watching your news station, and a guy's clip comes up. They're talking about this dude who did some crazy stunt, I don't know, at your local park, right? He, he threw some stuff in the water. It's turning the ducks gay, right? Let's just say that. Let's, let's take the Alex Jones route. So this dude put some chemicals in the water and they're talking about it on the news and he recorded it. So they're playing his clip. That's fair use because they're talking about it. They're going to be talking about it. They're going to be criticizing the dude. Obviously, they're going to be like, whoa, 
this dude put chemicals in the water and now all the ducks are gay. So it's like, do you understand how that works, right? Like I'm giving you criticism, I'm commentating over it, therefore it's fair use. That's just how it works. Take your review videos, for example. You reviewing Bluey, you reviewing The Good Dinosaur. Take those videos, for example. Those are fair use because you're commentating after. You're playing a clip from the show, from the movie, and then you're giving your thoughts about said clip. That's fair use. Finally, after like three days of begging YouTube to reach out to him, they finally respond and they say, totally understand your concern. Can you follow us here so we can share your next steps via DM? And he said, and did so. And then they reply, we've sent you a DM with the next steps. So what he did was he filed a copyright claim and they rejected it. I got an email around the same time as these tweets went up. I didn't even know they were up at the time, but I did get the email. And it's an email explaining to me that they looked over my Blazy video and they found that it was in fair use and there was no reason for them to take it down, so it'll remain up. They also gave me a copy of every single filing that Blazy had made. Uh, so I had that as well, and he's really shitty at filing copyright claims either way, but it didn't even go through. Like once he did correctly file it, because the first time he left a lot of shit out, then once he did correctly do it, they rejected it almost instantly because my video is fair use. But the tweets don't end there, folks. We're going to come back and look at another tweet that he made a couple of days ago, but I kind of want to go in chronological order here because it's important to the last tweet. Like, I want y'all to see his response before you see what he made for his last tweet. Bro, he's been talking about me for like three weeks now. He's been worried about my video, stressing about it, you know, trying to get Team YouTube to look at it. And he's still thinking about it as of three days ago. I find it very weird that this 30 year old man can't just move on, right? I don't know what he thought. He thought that people were going to be on his side and everybody was going to support him and he had so many slam dunks under his belt. The only thing that he showed was that his demographic is like almost 4% 13 year olds and that's in a 28 day span. And that doesn't even really work with the video because the video was made I think around 4 years ago so he would have to be going back 4 years but this 28 days isn't going to tell us shit. Either way that doesn't matter. If Blazy really wanted to clear his name, instead of showing us his demographic, he would show us how many subscribers he earned from that young furry video. That video where he's asking what's the right age to get a fursuit? I mean, come on dog, just show us. You say that you didn't earn a lot of subscribers from that video, but yet every time I ask you to show it, you just completely dodge me and pull that demographic out like it matters. And that's basically what Blazy's response video is all about. It's all about him trying to defend himself and say that his videos aren't for kids because he only has like seven videos for kids. I mean, you proved my argument, bro. You proved me right by saying that you have videos for kids on your channel and you also have NSFW content on your channel. My argument was that you shouldn't have a channel where you have both because you're going to have kids going to that channel and they're going to stumble upon your NSFW videos whether you like it or not. You try to make the argument that it's the parents' responsibility and that they need to be checking what their children watch. How about don't upload kids content on the same channel you're uploading weird kink shit where you're uploading ABDL videos or whatever the acronym is. I don't care, you're wearing diapers, bro. That's a new revelation that I didn't cover in the original Blazy documentary, but he does indeed wear diapers as well. And that's something that we're going to be looking at later when we go back to his tweets, but but whatever, whatever, y'all. Let's just watch this response and see how good Blazy defends himself, right? So recently, as most of you know, I came under fire for someone who questioned, why do I do what I do? Why do I make videos that cater to a certain furry crowd? We all know the ones I'm talking about. The Y series for one. The Y Vor video. The Y Pause video. Why mask and why diapers? Why do I, Blazy Fox, a 30 year old man, talk about naughty furry stuffs? 
I mean, it's almost like I'm a gay adult in a fandom that's mostly not safe for work. But let's really talk about this. Hey guys, Blacey here, and welcome to another video. This time, I want to talk about the more weirder videos I've done, and why I do them. Why do I talk about them, and why do I post such videos to a platform that has kids on them? La gasp! How terrible of me to do. It's almost like I don't have control of random kids that aren't being monitored when their parents should know by now. YouTube is full of very random things and some of the most disgusting things on the planet, like Logan Paul. So me having to like watch what I say and post is just kind of bizarre to me. I ain't advertising to kids. Sure, out of the 700 plus videos I've done, I've made videos for young furs, maybe like 5 or 10, talking about like when to get like your first kind of fursuit and all that kind of stuff, which has absolutely changed over time. But again, 5 or 10 videos out of the 700 plus videos I have made. As long as it follows the YouTube guidelines, I don't see the problem. This dude really can't take this shit serious for one f***ing second. He really has to say legasp. He's talking about the fact that he had NSFW content on a channel where there's videos tailored for minors and he's saying legasp and blaming it on the parents. Sure Blazy, it's the parents fault you decided to post kids videos and then their kids accidentally stumbled upon your video. It's the parents fault, blame the parents. And there is an argument you can make when it comes to, you know, having kids watch content that they're not supposed to and, you know, some of that falling on the parents. But in this situation, we're not even talking about that. That's a whole wider issue when it comes to kids going online and searching on YouTube. But do you actually want to be part of that problem? At this point, it seems like he's fully embraced the fact that that's what he's doing. He fully embraced the fact that he had this kid's content on this channel to begin with and he quickly started posting NSFW once one of his kid videos went viral. It's very concerning, man. And a lot of people doubted me. They tried to say that this dude wasn't weird. I really don't understand how you can make any argument trying to defend this dude when he's sitting here posting these kids videos, admitting that he has five or ten kids videos on his channel and then posting these abdl videos why musk he's posting kink videos he like all the fucking time dude and then interlacing bluey videos how can you sit there and think that a kid isn't going to stumble upon that you think that a majority of adults are watching bluey videos it's not a majority of adults it's kids bluey is a kid show as much as you try to say that adults watch it i'm sure that they do but the main demographic, the target for that show, is kids. There's no arguing that. I never asked you why you were making those videos. I know why you were making those videos, and I really don't care. If you were making those videos on a channel that was dedicated to NSFW content, I wouldn't have gave you any issues at all. I wouldn't have made a video about you. There wouldn't have been no issues, man. I really don't give a f I might have laughed at it on my own, but I wouldn't have made a whole ass video about it. But once I seen that you made that video calling out a 14 year old and saying that you were going to sue him, I knew that you were probably doing other shit in the past. So I looked into it and for sure you were doing weird shit. And Blazy has fully absorbed the degenerate lifestyle. Apparently all his friends have left him, his family has left him and he's having a really hard time. He wrote this crazy Twitter post where he's asking people for money. And he's basically making the claim that like I destroyed his whole life. He wrote, been a rough week. YT drama calling me bad things and YT itself not helping. Mum not respecting me. Friends abandoning me. Working ass off. Stress so much. Making myself sick and not eating and lose weight. Is anyone able to send some money so I can afford some takeout? Thank you. And then he gives his whole ass PayPal out. Now... I'm going to blur his PayPal in this video because I don't want y'all sending him anything. I doubt anybody would anyway, but, you know, some people just like to be weird and they'll go and try to start messing with him or buddy troll him or some shit like that. And, you know, we don't need all that shit around here. This is always like the default low cow reaction to getting called out. 
they always start trying to look for sympathy. They say that their family left them, their friends left them, they're all alone, they have no money, they have no house, their car broke down, they're stranded, they need food, they need water, you know, they say all this crazy shit, right? And they e-beg, they like default to e-begging. It's a crazy thing to see, but it happens all the time. It's just the low cow cycle and you know, Blazy is definitely falling into that cycle rather quickly. He reminds me a lot of Earl Doobie, you know what I mean, with the speech impediment and the involvement with children and all that mess of stuff, you know what I mean? He's just kind of got like Earl Doobie written all over him. You know, it's pretty crazy. It's almost like I found my own furry Earl Doobie. It's it's wild, y'all. Try to say that five times fast. It's a, It's not an easy one. So I made this interesting revelation when I was looking at Blazy's replies. While I was doing research for this video, I just wanted to see what else he's been up to. And I saw that he replied to this person who was going on a long-winded rant about the ABDL community. Now I'm not going to read this whole thing. I'll show it to you, but I'm not going to read it. You can pause if you want to read it, but it's basically a bunch of nonsense about how people who hate on ABDL are like projecting or something like that. And then Blazy comes in. And he replies, yeah, I did a video talking about the diaper furry community and the amount of comments I got calling them the worst of the worst kind of names. And it's like, dude, some people just like comfort around their crotch. Why does that affect you so much? The hate is so dumb. And then somebody says link to the video. I'd love to give it a look. And then Blazy gives a link to this video. I didn't even know exist, but he talks about why people wear diapers. And of course, I'm gonna be playing this video. I, I can't just not play this video, y'all. But before I play this video, there's one more tweet that I wanna read. We might as well get it out of the way before we react to this video. And that's this tweet that comes from a little while back in September. So before the video came out that I made and before he made his video towards Shark Hunter, in a tweet in September, Blazy went on a rant about why KSI should set his channel for kids. He says, because these guys are specifically targeting children, but their channel aren't set to this is for children when it should be. Their products aren't healthy in any way, so that's not a good thing to advertise to kids. They are known scammers, not businessmen. I think this was in reference to Prime, or maybe it was a whole mixture of things that KSI has done, but this is so ironic coming from him, so hypocritical, man, to hear this dude talk about how somebody else should be setting their video for kids or vice versa, right? He's basically making the claim that KSI's content is for kids. And I do agree. I think that KSI has a lot of kids watching him. But the difference between you and KSI is that, you know, KSI doesn't post NSFW content directly on his channel, or at least not that I know of, right? And you're directly posting NSFW content on your channel. It's really rich. For you to try to make the claim that somebody else should set their videos for kids or you know like i said vice versa when in fact that's something that you should be doing you should be setting your videos not for kids actually you should just not have any kids content on your channel at all there should be no like having nsfw and then having kids content and then setting the nsfw to 18 plus only just don't make the content at all on the same channel it's that easy so now that we got that out of the way, that's basically all the tweets that we're going to be looking at because now we have Blazy talking about diapers, why he likes diapers, why people wear diapers. I mean, all the locales got to wear diapers, right? So here he is. Without further ado, the reason y'all are here, Blazy Fox telling y'all why you should wear diapers. Why diapers? Is it because they're soft and cuddly feeling? Is it because of the extra padding when you're sitting down? Is it because it makes you feel like a child and you lose some of that stress from your adult life? I honestly don't know, because unlike Paws and Vore, the other two Y videos I've done, I'm not into diapers. I will say that, yeah, I'm not into them. But there seems to be a pretty big thing on Twitter at the moment, as so being the YouTuber that I am, I want to talk about it, which is that like fursuiters are coming out as diaper furs, baby furs, or ABDL, which stands for an adult baby diaper lifer. So I know this is probably not a topic you all want to hear and have me talk about, 
But I just want people to understand that. That people into this kind of stuff are consenting adults. That's the key thing here. They're consenting adults. They can do whatever they choose to do. You have one life. If they want to spend it in a diaper, that's up to them. They can absolutely do that. Like I said, there's a surgeons of fairies, mostly a lot of first suitors coming out that they like wearing diapers. Which I believe started because one first suitor who almost has the same name as me, so, so some people got it kind of mixed up by that, was being outed as being a diaper lover and having his diaper thing used against him. And so he said, screw you, and he like released an image on Twitter that's just like, bow, here, here we go, I'm a diaper lover, I'm a, I'm a diaper furry. Which is good on him for doing that, like, it, it's a, not an easy thing to do at all, like, I totally understand, because he was basically being blackmailed, or, like, it was used against him, like, huh, you do this, how disgusting of you, ah, uh. and so he's just like, yep, here we go, yep, this is what I do, like, absolutely shame on you, shame on you guys for just attacking him like that, and making him do that, he didn't need to, and, but, like, good on him for doing so, it's out there now, you know, he just, and, he is gonna get hate for it. It is absolutely vile and disgusting. It's disgusting that like people just did that to him. I find it weird that Blazy starts this video off by listing three reasons why somebody would like to be in diapers. And then he follows that up with saying that he's never tried them and that he's not into them. I mean it's kind of weird that you have these like really specific examples of why you claim somebody would want to wear a diaper, but then you say that you don't wear diapers. Just seems like you had a lot of experience there. I mean, I wouldn't be able to come up with three reasons why I would want to wear a diaper. So I don't know how you got those reasons if you just pull them out of your head or I don't know what, but that's pretty wild there, man. And then he's got to start trying to justify it by saying it's between two consenting adults and, you know, people shouldn't kink shame, yada, yada, yada. It doesn't matter, dude. If you're pretending to be a child and you're doing it sexually, then you're a weirdo and you deserve to be shunned. You deserve to be pushed off the internet. Like people should not want to talk to you. People should dislike you. That's just how it works, man. Those are things that society should look down upon. If you're wearing a diaper and you're doing it sexually and you're like having some kind of relationship with somebody where you're pretending to be a child, that's obviously not right. There's no reason that I should be having to explain this. I feel like people should know right from wrong and what's normal and what's not normal, and that's something that's just not normal. But folks, that's all we have for Blazy Fox today. This was a really long video. I usually don't make videos this long when it comes to commentary. This is more like a documentary slash commentary video. I don't know if I'm going to title it as a documentary, but... It, I did put a lot of work into it. I mean, I feel like you can tell. I looked through a lot of his tweets. I did a lot of editing here. I tried my best to make it entertaining for y'all, and I had a lot of material to work with. I feel like this isn't going to be the last that we see Blazy Fox. He's fallen into the low-cal cycle, and he's just going to continue to get worse and worse. And y'all, my brain is fried. I mean, just a couple days ago, I was talking about how my brain was fried from making that Cyrax video. But man, imagine having to listen to a furry talk for like 30 minutes. That shit will fry your brain. And then imagine doing that shit on repeat, like four videos. And then man, having to sift through his tweets, I can make a whole nother video about that. But before I do that, I'm going to need another advanced brain surgery. They're going to have to go in with like a laser beam. It's like this new advanced laser beam surgery. It's going to cost a lot of money. It's going to cost a lot of time. So, you know, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe so I can recover quickly. It really helps out in the algorithm, y'all, and it's, it's going to make my healing process so much easier. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.